Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be telling you about the Doppler or the radial velocity method of um, finding extrasolar planets. Okay. So uh, here we go. So the radial velocity, this uses um, the Doppler effect. If you don't know about the Doppler eff effect, go on the previous video where I tell you about the Doppler. But basically what happens is the following. Uh, when things are moving uh, in relation to you, so to towards you or away from you, um, and this this thing is a source of either light or sound, any wave, uh, there is going to be an apparent shift on the frequency or wavelength or frequency and a wavelength of what that source is sending out. So, for example, imagine that I have a star and that star is moving towards me, uh, the wavelengths of that star, the certain specific lines, are going to shift towards the blue part of the spectrum. So we call it blue shift. And if the star is moving away from me, then the wavelengths of the light are going to go towards and shift towards the red, so it's red shift. So the radial velocity method works by knowing that any object is going to cause a gravitational pull in another. So when I have a planet around the star, the star makes the planet go around, uh, around them, around it. But the planet is going to make the star to wobble around the center of mass of the system. So this is the planet going around the star, okay? And my star, due to the gravitational pull to the planet, of the planet, is going to go around the center of mass of that system as well, the planet star system, okay? So if I'm here on Earth and this system is edge on, sometimes the star is going to show blue shift. So because the star is moving towards me, okay? Other times, as the star keeps going around the center of mass of the system, is the star moves away from me. So from Earth, we get a red shift. So what we do is we, instead of looking for the planet directly, we look at a stars or a star or several stars. And we measure the velocity of the stars in relation to us over a certain amount of time. And if we get a graph like this one, where the velocity sometimes is positive and other times is negative, so kind of a sine or a cosine wave, then it means that the star is wobbling. The star is moving towards and away from us in a periodic way or in a periodic motion. And the best explanation for this to be happening is that there is a planet around the star, okay? I'm going to include this link on the description. This shows what this is showing in here, okay? So this is how it works. That's the planet right there going around the star, okay? This makes that the star wobbles around the center of mass of the system planet star. So what happens is the star shows that the velocity sometimes increases, other times decreases in relation to us. And this is how it is if I look at the spectra of the star, which is what I'm going to do, okay? I see the line sometimes moving towards the red part of the spectrum and other times moving towards the blue part of the spectrum. So these three lines here where is where the, if the star is not moving, where the lines would be. And sometimes you see the lines moving towards the, here we go, red, other times towards the blue, okay? So that means that my star is going around on the periodic motion. And then the time period that this happens tells me the orbital period of the planet, okay? So I can get a lot of information just by it. I can also make an estimate of the mass of the planet, as I'll show you in a second, okay? Um, so let me just, before I move on the slide, to give you a little bit more information. So there is a periodic shift in the star spectral lines as it moves about the center of mass. And this is because there is a planet around that star that is making it wobble. It could mean more than a planet. And if it's more than a planet, the line doesn't look so pretty as this one, but you will be able to identify the different planets, okay? So I get blue shift when the star is moving towards the Earth and red shift when the star is moving away from the Earth. And as I told you, this is periodic. And then from the period that it takes for the star to move towards and away from us, I can get the orbital period of that planet, okay? So this is what I can do. I can get the period of the planet by using the period of the radial velocity curve, okay? The amplitude of the curve, so how tall the curve goes high in, uh, higher up and lower down, tells me about the speed of the star in a circular orbit. And this gives me information about the speed that the planet is going around the star, okay? Sometimes the line 
is not very um, much looking like a sine and a cosine line and is a little bit inclined. This gives me information about the planet's uh, eccentricity of the orbit. And then I can use these equations. The period of the planet squared equals 4 pi uh, cubed to uh, all divided by g, the gravitational constant, times the mass of the star uh, that multiplies 1 plus the mass of the planet over the mass of the star, all of that to the power of minus 2. And I multiply that the whole thing by the cube of the semi-major axis, OK? And here I use how the relationship works, the mass of the star times the velocity of the star equals the mass of the planet times the velocity of the planet. I can do the same for the radii, OK? So you don't have, if you're doing this at a level because you're taking the astrophysics option, you don't need to know these formulas into this detail. You just need to have an idea of how the vo radial velocity method works uh, in finding out the planets, OK? So the planet's less massive than the star, and it moves more rapidly in a larger circle, OK? So the planet with a larger mass would increase the, si the, the size of the star's circle and the amplitude of the, of the radial velocity curve, OK? And then if I want to get the period of the system, I get by Newton's version of the Kepler's third law, which is this one here on the top, OK? So that's the Newton's version. The average separation of the planet and the star and uh, this, the av that average separation is A, is simply the sum of the radii for the circular orbits. Typically, the mass of the planet MP is small enough to ignore, so you can take it away in your calculations. However, when MP is large and MS is small, it does have a noticeable effect. Now, this technique uh, is biased towards a certain specific type of planets. This radial uh, velocity technique is biased towards larger mass planets because the larger the mass of the planet, then the more is going to attract the star to, to move away from a center of mass of the system, so the more the star wobbles. So I get a, uh, the curve to be more not noticeable. Um, also, the period of the orbit is also biased towards uh, planets they are facing, uh, sorry, they are close to the star because I don't just take one observation and I say there is a planet there. I take the observations and I keep looking at the graphs to see if it can, it can still give me the same pattern over and over again. And I can also use other techniques to confirm that there is a planet in there. So this technique of the radial velocity, which was quite successful in the beginning, and it was the one uh, where we found the first extrasolar planet, um, this technique is, is very much biased towards this planet. So in the beginning, in 1995 and onwards, most of the planets we are finding were what we call hot Jupiters because they had Jupiter-type masses. Sometimes they were five times the mass of Jupiter. Sometimes they were two masses, uh, two times the mass of Jupiter. So they were huge planets. They were orbiting very close to the star, closer than Mercury is orbiting our own star. So that's the name, hot Jupiters. And we were looking and we we're saying, wow, all the other systems are so different from ours. But this was simply because of the radial velocity, which is a great way to look for extrasolar planets. And I remember when I was at uni using it, because I was doing some research as well. Um, it, it is a great way, and it works fine. But it is biased towards certain types of planets, because that's how the radial velocity works, by measuring the star wobbling, OK? So that is it for radial velocity. More techniques are finding asterisk solar planets will pop in. And I will try to, as much as possible, tell you towards which side uh, this technique is going to be biased towards, because each technique has its own advantages and faults or things that they could improve. So that is it for radial velocity. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.